caught him yet, sir? Hello, Devery. No, they haven't caught him. I think it'll break your heart when someone else comes Don Starling. What makes you think I'm so interested in Don Starling? But they can't bring out additions fast enough for you. The last three days must have cost you a fortune. When you put a man inside, you're interested when he gets himself out. Of course, sir. I didn't mean to be... All here. right, all right. You are not off duty. Oh, I'm just going off. Come on, I'll buy a drink. Well, it's very nice of you, but I'm afraid... I'll teach you to wait. That's one thing a policeman's girl must always learn. Oh, it's nobody special, sir. I haven't found a girl yet who'll put up with my hours. Well, when you do, make sure she stays that way. Sometimes when they get married, they start making timetables, you know. The lacy arms, all right? Yeah, the lacy arms, fine. He's been seen all over, of course. Nearest to us is Bradford. That one, I believe. The county police have put out a general warning for all women to stay off the moors, unless escorted. You won't find Don Starling on the moors. You think he'll come back to Manchester? There's still 5,000 pounds worth of jewellery in this town. He might come back for that. Or to take a pot shot at you. That's crime book stuff. A man doesn't break out of jail to kill a cop, he breaks out to get away. That's not what he swore at his trial. Yeah, we all swear violence at times. How often have you said to yourself, I'd like to kill that man? And don't tell me who it is. Evening, Mr. Martineau. Hello, Doug. What do you have? A uh, beer, please. A beer? And a scotch. And a scotch for you. Let this be my pleasure. Let it be your pleasure that we're off duty. It wasn't a bribe, you know. <laughs> Well, look who's here, my gorgeous detective. Hello, Lucky. Like a drink? I'd like you, darling, but you always bring a bodyguard. Cut it out, Lucky. I know you're kidding, but other people don't. I'm kidding? I'm not kidding, darling. We've been mad about you for years. You know Detective Devery? Yes, but not intimately. Hello. Well, what nice juicy crimes have we got tonight? Oh, very dull. Except for Don Starling. Starling? You mean he's a Manchester? Well, it could be. I don't know. You might know more than I do. Me? Why me? You were very thick with him at one time, weren't you? Oh, that was years ago, before I was married. Oh, I quite liked Don. He used to say he'd reform for me. That night he went and did a break-in. Dropped him like a hot cinder. Did he write to you from jail? Listen, darling, when I've finished with someone, they're finished. He slugged a warder getting out, you know. I read. Man's on the danger list. If he died, that's murder. Anyone helping Starling then would be an accessory. Serves him right. I just thought I'd point it out, Lucky. Just in case he contacted you. Why me? Well, a man on the run needs friends. Well, it's better than to contact me. But you, you could contact me any time. Yeah, well, let's have another drink on that, shall we? Ah, uh, look, sir, if you don't... Yeah, yeah, all right. On your way. Right, good night. Thanks for the drink. Yeah, give him my love. Oh, well. Policeman on a date. Well, it's nice to know some of you are human. Some of us are even married. Take care of yourself, Lucky. I could even take care of you if you'd let me. There's a lot of love at them. Everything all right, Inspector? Depends on your conscience, doesn't it? <laughs> Lorry, tomorrow. Better pick me up at 8.30. We'll get there before all the traffic. 8.30? You'll be there before the horses. OK, OK, 8.30. Doug Savage, wants to leave at dawn. You better fill up the taxis tonight. Yeah, right. You made me box that stroke. Oh, why don't you learn to be a good loser? You're talking when a man's concentrating. You're quiet. Watch this. Shot. Clean as a whistle. Ten? Ten. You might brush this table once in a while, Bird. What do you want for two bob? Leopard skin? I suppose there's no soap. Yes, there's soap. But it's a free sample. You know what I saw today, Bird? What? A little hand vacuum cleaner. Good for cleaning out my taxi. If I buy one, Bird, you can lend me for the tables. Two bob an hour. <laughs> that way I get a free table and a clean one. How about it? Want to make a deal? No noise. Keep washing. Don? Tell them to go on. You'll catch them up. OK, Don. You don't have to go on me. I hope not. Tell them. OK. Hey, you two go on. I'll meet you at the Lacey Arms. I've still got things to do. It's all that beer you pour down your gullet. <laughs> See ya. Don't look at me. Tell Bert to go down and lock up. OK, Don. Bert, go down and bolt the door. I would bolt it if you've gone. Bolt it! All Do right. what I tell you! All right, Laurie, all right. Get that line down. Good to see you, Don. Yeah, I need money, Laurie. How about a fiver? I need two or three hundred. Two or three hundred? John, 
I never saw you come in. Neither did anyone else. And what's more, I haven't been here. Do you understand, Bert? Yes, of course, Don. You're me. going to have a nice, quiet sit down in your office. Bert, you can listen to music. Take this out so you won't be disturbed. Have a heart, Don. Where am I going to get 200? Gus Hawkins. Gus Hawkins? You kidding? I'm not kidding. You ever heard of a bookmaker lending money? He said, Len, we're going to take it. Do you still send a clerk to the bank with his race money every morning? I suppose so. Make sure. They used to cut through Higgins Passage. Check that as well. We'll need three cars, including one of your cabs. Why three? I want a car parked downstairs and Higgins Passage for me to wait in. The second car follows the clerk, sees off the passage. I'll make the grab. We'll drive on to the moors, ditch the car in the quarry, and your cab picks us up from there. Okay. When? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow? How can I organize that fast? Besides, tomorrow is Doncaster races. That's why tomorrow, so we can get good and lost in race traffic. Now, leave me cigarettes in the light. I'm supposed to drive Doug Savage. Cancel it. Well, what am I going to Don't give me arguments, Laurie. No. You need a new passport and enough dough to get me out of the country. Okay, Don. What shall I tell them about the jewelry? They're still in Manchester. And nobody but me knows where. Oh, I'm not worrying, Don. It's just that... Well, you know, if the boy's here, you're wanting a passport and some dough... You'll all get your share out. But it was me that got the 14 years, remember? Well, sure, I never gave you a lot away, did I? No, you didn't. So, all right, everybody does what I say. We spent even all the way down. Call me back on this line tonight. Now, get the track. Where are you hiding, Don? Here and there. Keep moving. That's my motto. You don't get much away, do you? Anything you want in particular? Yeah, a woman. But I'll fix my own. Now, for God's sake, don't say that again. You'll find yourself... Shut up and get moving. Concert's over. Come to home now. Just lock the place up nice and safe, and I'll stay here as quiet as a mouse. I can't let you stay here. You police. can and you will. Just leave me a key, and I'll let myself out. No one has to know I was here. Of course, say, be careful. Listen, by the time the law finds out I was here, I'll be in five other places. Put the lights out, just like usual. All right. Good night, Bert. Hey? Good night. Oh, good night, Don. Oh, and Bert, don't get any fancy ideas in connection with cops, will you? Oh, no, Don. Sure, I don't like you being here, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to run to the coppers. What do you think I am? I don't think anything. I just want you to remember, if the law finds me here tonight, you've gone. Finished. You'll be seen to, get it? Oh, of course, Don. Of course. What time do you call this? 11.25. What time did you book off? 10 o'clock. And since then, you've been in some pub. Correct. Anything for supper? There was, if you want to warm it up. You know, other men can ring up their wives and tell them when they'll be home. Of course, I couldn't expect you to do that. You couldn't even phone and tell me you'd be working late. And I'm supposed to make a meal, whether you come back or not. Yeah, I'm sorry, Jill. I meant to phone you, but... Well, I got switched to a stolen car job. Of course, a stolen car is more important than I am. I don't know about that, Jill. It is my job. Well, at least one could think you could come home at ten when you went off duty. You've been out of this house since half past seven this morning. I'm sorry. I was weary. I needed a drink. There's plenty of beer here. Yeah, but it's not the same somehow, is it? No, I'm aware of that. I'd sooner be in some pub than at home, with low women sitting round the bar ready now, to go with you. wait a minute. That's all I ever do, wait. Wait for you to go out, or come in, or go to bed. Julia. It's a pretty empty life for me. You know, we never go out together, and you're never at home. I try to keep this place nice, and you treat it like a rooming house. I haven't got enough to do. That's your trouble. Well, you're not suggesting I should take a job, are you? No, I'm not. I'd look nice. The great Inspector Martineau's wife hunting for a job. You're very worried about the way things look, aren't you? Yes, I am. Is that wrong? Well, it would look all right if you justified your existence by having a baby or two. What's happened to us? I don't know, Julia. I, I suppose it's what hasn't happened to us. Do you know how long it is since you made love to me? Yeah, a long time. Don't you want me anymore? 
I want children, Julia. Oh, no, don't start all that again. Look, well, Julia, we're both still plenty young enough. We could have some fine kids. Your life wouldn't be so empty. You never used to mind. Well, times change, Julia. We're married. We ought to behave as if we're married. We can't afford kids, Harry. Perhaps if you thought of me and your responsibilities... Responsibility, it, singular. If it were plural, there'd be a different atmosphere in the house. necessary to inform the neighbours of our... The hell with the neighbours! That's all you worry about. The neighbours, what people think, your social standing. I don't know how long you expect me to stand all this. Me neither! I don't know how long I can stand it myself! You done? You're late. Plenty of time. How have you been done? We're sure they come down this passage. Sure, about ten o'clock. Laurie's waiting opposite Gus Hawkins now. He follows the money and signals us just before they turn into the passage. What about the switch car? Laurie's taxi. Clogger drives it and meets us at the sand pits 1025. Lloyd, for Pete's sake, hurry up. Do you want to hit all the traffic? All right, all right. Bet you wouldn't wish a girl like that, would you, Colin, eh? I think the gov just wants to miss the crowds, Mrs. Hawkins. Chloe, if you're not ready in two minutes, I'm going at you. Oh, now, he must shout at her. She's only fixing her face. You're fixing two hours already. Get in the car. Colin, get that money off. I don't like so much hanging around. Get it in as soon as the bank opens. Yes, gov. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Hawkins. It being like it always is. And no more credit to anyone on that list if they want to put a bit cash. Right, gov. Good luck, gov. Have you got everything in? Yes, it's all in, Gov. All right, well, step on it. Here we go. Right, stand by. Run for it, sis! Fibers. 200 fibers? Spills, spills! This is 4,000 smackers! 1,000 apiece and one for clogger. Quiet. But you know names. The filly's listening. Keep looking in front. We don't want her memorizing your ugly mug. When are we going to dump her? First bit of quiet road. We won't take her too far. After all, she's got to walk back. She's done all the walking she'll ever do. Right! She hasn't croaked! Well, he didn't have to you do think that! I meant Thank to? God I never laid a hand Shut on up. her! All in this Put yourselves of... together! You thought of getting away with Robbie. Why not this as well? One witness yes, misses the... Oh, shut up! never give up. You know what Shut up! Now. Keep your heads! Pull over. We'll get rid of it. Drop her behind that hammock. Me? Not likely. You would, I tell you. Why not you? You did her in. All right, I did her in. One or two. What's the difference? Where'd you get that? Never mind. Get this thing out of my sight. Help me. Let 
there's a car coming. Get moving. What do we do with this fella? Cover your faces. Saw me carrying the girl. He did. He's over the first phone. It makes no difference. Keep moving past. That's all. Another mile or two to go. We'll be through with this car. Give me the money. Police and quick. I think there's been a murder. Your name, please? Right. Which phone box? Three miles beyond. Right. Will you stay where you are, please? M2CK calling all patrols. Body of a girl reported three miles beyond Crossway's phone box on Doncaster Road. Informant John Hartley waiting at phone. Over. This is K-51 calling M2CK. We are in the immediate vicinity. Proceed to the telephone box and advise an arrival. Over. What well, a morning, isn't it? Robbery, violence and abduction in Higgins Passage and others. Think there's any connection? Could be. They said a girl. Mr. John Hartley. Right. You police. Where is it? Up the road about three miles. Right. Hop in. You show us where and tell us what happened. Jumping your footprints about there. It's the girl from Gus Hawkins' office. See if you can reach headquarters from here. If not, get back to the phone box. Look, I'm not going to get too involved in all this. I, I'm a commercial traveller. I was. I'm away from Sheffield. Yeah, well, don't worry about that, Mr. Hartley. We already know what's behind this. We'll have to take a statement from you at headquarters. After that, you'll be free to go. Thank you. You say it was a, a Buick? Yes, it was an old pre-war one, sort of dirty green colour. Looked a bit shabby and neglected. Did you get the registration number? I'm afraid not. I was more concerned with seeing the driver didn't run me into the ditch. Would you know him again? Doubt it. When I got close, he put his hands over his face. They all three of them did. What about the man who carried the body? No, he got back in the car by the time I got close enough. He seemed a well-set man. Tall? Well, not as tall as you. About what age? 30, 40, hard to say. Had on a dark suit or a sweater. Remember anything about the others? No, just eyes. Staring eyes over their hands. They'll all know me again. I wouldn't worry about that either. They'll be too busy to bother about you again. What did you find out? It's a Higgins passage job. They snatched her because she was chained to the handbag. The boy had the keys in his pocket. See this on her fingers? Those marks. It's malachite green. What's that? Some powder they dust notes with. Stains the hands of anyone who touches it. Get onto the super. Ask him to put out a special to all districts. Has any office had any force recently dusted banknotes with Malachi Green? Right, this is a break. K-51 calling him... If it is Malachi Green, all the men in that car will have it. He'll be here. He'll be here waiting for us. There's a lot of traffic, Don. There's a lot of police, too. Now wipe every sponge off that car. We'll share this out now, and you can drop me off in Barnsley. Don't be lost. Go on to the races like nothing happened. But, Don... Go on to the races. If you're questioned, you've got a track full of alibis, right? Right. And if you find this on you, you want it, right? Right. <laughs> 
Hawkins an hour ago, sir. He's on his way back. Good. Get across to his office. As soon as he arrives, get him over to headquarters. By bluff, order, or warrant. By charm. All right, come on, bring it up, please. There's nothing to see. Move him along. Bring it up, please. Any developments? We found this. It's been stored. Think it was used on the job? We're guessing. Where was the Buick? Right there, as far as we can tell. There's a new patch of oil. And a woman in one of those back rooms heard a scream. Did she see anything? A car full of men driving towards the main road. Anything else? Nothing. She didn't even tell us that till we asked her. Silly woman. What about Doug Savage? He's at the races. But his mother and the cleaning woman heard and saw nothing. Naturally. And Lucky Lusk? She wasn't there. The snatch occurred around 10.30. They weren't open. How's the lad who was cushed? Well, he hasn't spoken yet. We got custody with him at the hospital. Message from the superintendent, sir. Halifax are holding a man with dyed fingers. Will you go back? Right. You have a go at Doug Savage as soon as he gets back. Right, sir. Oh, good morning, Harry. Morning, sir. I hear we've got a green man. Well, Halifax have. He's a janitor in one of the city hall departments. He'd been doing some petty pilfering, but he'd avoided all traps. So they dusted 200 one-pound notes and he swiped the lot. When did they pick him up? This morning. He showed up to work with Malachite all over his hands. How much did they get back? Nothing. He says he took it to Doncaster and blew it on the races. Well, that would tie up. He passed the die on. I tried to have him sent here, but Halifax said, if we want to see him, we can jolly well go there. I'll take an excursion. It's all there. All right, sir. Well, the kid had a fractured thyroid cartilage. Looks like someone chopped him. She's only 19. They sent out old men with factory payrolls, office boys with a handful of fivers, and young girls with money chained to their wrists. You can see it any day near any bank in any town. They're asking for murder. Oh, any news of that, Buick? 57 different varieties, but not the one we want. What the hell are you doing here? Got Gus Hawkins in the waiting room. Already? Well, I'll call the patrol to bring him right here. He'll be a superintendent yet. His wife's corked a bit, so they dropped her home first. Let Mr. Hawkins in, will you? How much money was in the girl's bag? Well, Gus says 4,000 pounds. Four grand. You want to know something else? He's got green on his fingers. Well, it wasn't much of a long shot, was it? I get out a call to every chemist shop in Manchester. Anybody trying to buy a solvent for staying hands should be held until we get there. Right. And don't tell them any more than they need, no. Say there's been a simple larceny or something. Come in. Information room. Hello, Inspector. It's a nice mess. It's not very pretty, is it? Take it outside. All right. Oh, poor kids. Poor little Cecily. I should never have sent her with all that money. It's a lesson learned too late, Gus. or anything? Any idea of it? We're working on it. Now, how's the money made up? Three thousand in ones and two hundred fivers, and I hope it chokes. Well, maybe it will. Who counted it? Oh, it's four thousand, all right. I counted it first, then Cecily counted it and put it in the bank bag. Then I went off to Doncaster. Can I phone the wife? Yeah, of course. Get Mrs. Hawkins on the phone, will you? Rush from 6203. You get that? Yes, sir. You sure you got all that money at the races? I want a serious answer, Gus. It's important. So help me. It came out of the satchel all crumpled up anyhow, just the way I'd stuffed it in. I never used my own money at all. See, here it is. It's still in bundles. Why? Because I've got a hunch that some of that money you won belonged to the Halifax Town Hall. Yeah, I don't want to be involved in... You are involved, can't... Gus. But not with the borough treasurer. Now sit down, have a cigarette. Thanks. I keep thinking that poor kid Cecily. Have her parents been told? I suppose I... I ought to go around and see them. Can't face them somehow. Gus, how long have your hands been like that? My hands? Oh, I see it. <laughs> That's funny you should mention it. I noticed it when I got out of the bath this morning. I, I thought maybe I'd handled that many pound notes in Doncaster yesterday. Hey, has some bastard been passing me snide money? Hello, Martin. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, they're still trying to get your number. There's no reply. Well, we only just dropped around there. You want them to keep on trying? No, forget it. All right, forget that number. I well, needn't keep you any longer, Gus. Sorry I botched up your racing. I think a wife would stay in to be with a husband who'd just been robbed of 4,000 had a valued and trusted girl clerk murdered. You can never tell about wives, Gus. 
I've a damn good mind not to go home at all tonight. Yeah, how did it get out of here? Right at the bottom. Thank you. Fortune, I'd like to know, sir. He's now wanted for murder. Who? Starling. The warder died. It's in the stop press. Latest report on Starling. Latest report, Barnsley. Barnsley, who reported? Bus conductor. And just before they stopped at the checkpoint, a man jumped off and disappeared into a fairground. And so he is coming home. Oh, he's also been seen in London, Brighton, Southampton, and Ostend. Yeah, I'm more inclined to believe Barnsley. The super's buzzing for you, sir. All right. You want a diet today, sir? Oh. Now, do me a favor, call my wife. I should have been home for lunch. Teach her to wait. That's something a policeman's girl has to learn. Just phone her. Yes, sir. Yes? You wanted me, sir? What did you get from Gus Hawkins? Only there was 4,000 pounds in that bag and the janitor's money was with it. So far, our only link with the Wainwright killers is Green Fingers. We've circulated all chemists. We've got to do more than that. Somewhere there are four men walking around flush with money. And when those types are flush, they gamble. Find the gamblers and you'll probably find more Green Fingers. Well, there's no racing till Saturday. I'm not talking about that. I'm thinking about those gambling schools up on the moors. Had any experience of them? No, not much is out of our area. Well, they toss coins for pretty large stakes, especially after a big race like today. Oh, it would take 50 men to raid one of those. They use lookouts with field glasses. Nevertheless, we've got to raid. Do we know where it is tonight? We did, but they must have got wind of it because they cancelled it. County police say it's been switched to tomorrow. They've got their informers trying to pinpoint the locality. Who decides that, sir? The organiser. He gets a commission for keeping the ring and paying the lookouts. Do we know who he is? County police think it's a man called Savage. In Manchester? They think. I might be able to find out quicker than County. I don't care who finds out, but I want cooperation between you and County. There's been a murder, Harry, and if I find any area of feuding, I'll throw the book at you. Of course, sir. Inspector Van was working on this from County End. You can contact him. Yes, sir. Oh, I suppose you read that Starling is first-degree murder now. You'd better stop thinking of Starling as your own personal property, Harry. He's everybody's problem. I think he's about to become Manchester's problem. So is Cicely Wainwright, and that's the job you're on. Now, I realize that, sir, but whatever he is, Starling would have read about the warder. Now, we know his past record, violence, assault, rape, and now murder. He's got nothing to lose now. He'll be more dangerous than ever. We don't even know if he's within 100 miles of Manchester. I know. Don't ask me how. I'm six cents, anything, but I know. I know how his mind works. Now, look, Harry. I grew up with a man, sir. We went to the same school, fought the same war together. I know how his mind works. Are you trying to sell me this extra sensory perception? I'm not trying stuff? to sell you anything, sir. Now, look, his only hope now is to skip the country. To do that, he needs money. Now, where does he go for that money? The town where his contacts are, the city where he hid the jewellery. I'm not taking him off the Wainwright job. I'm not asking that, sir. I want your permission to let Devery cover every main contact that Starling had before he was jailed. He's a desperate man now. He could show up at any minute at any of them. You ought to run for mayor sometime. Thank you, sir. I want Devery. And bring in the Don Starling file. Devery's coming right up, sir. Miss Darling, fine. All right, thanks. No, don't go. Sort through that. Find the address of those people. And check with records in case anyone's moved. Give me my home. They found the Buick. They found it in the old mill top quarry. What? County think it's the same place they were going to have the tossing games. Uh, so that's why they switched. I want that fingerprint report the moment it comes through. Of course. I've got a job for you. And that's a list of Don Starling's main contacts just before he was sentenced. Starling, eh? He's first degree murder now. Your job is to make sure that every one of those people know that sheltering or assisting him makes them accessories after the fact. It'll take you most of the day, but make sure you cover them all. Lovett and Roach. Yeah, they've got a garage and a private taxi service. They're part of the same sleazy mob. Chloe Hawkins, that's Gus Hawkins' wife. Before that, she was anybody's wife, including Don Starling's. You never know, it might be a contact. Now, she'll try furniture steel first. York Road, eh? Yeah, it's an old man who's got a furniture warehouse. It was through his information we got Don Starling. Well, he's not likely to harbor and assist. He might, under duress. Starling's got nothing to lose now, you know. This is all completed now, sir. Shall I type it here? No, check it with records first. Now, you go with it. Right. What's your next move, sir? Oh, that's up to fingerprints. I want to know the story of that Buick. Now, get a car and get moving. Hello. Oh. Hello, Julia. Look, um... I may be a little late tonight. Well, I, I didn't want you to wait up for me. Oh, yes, I, I'm sorry about lunch, Julia. I, I was busy. I was very busy. Oh, so busy. Such an important man. Couldn't spare one moment in all the live-long morning to phone his wife. 
Well, of course, Devery phoned. He's not so important as you. He has time. Now, look, Julia, a young girl has been murdered and 4,000 pounds have been stolen. I'm not enjoying it, you know. How do you think I'll like it? Sitting at home, spending Saturday evening, waiting to wash up after somebody? Yes. Fingerprints were both on the Buick. Now, what have we got? Nothing of any use, I'm afraid. Plenty of smears, but nothing definite. It was well wiped. But bloody dead ends. Give me a cigarette, man. Stop Laurie Lovett's taxi service. You might as well turn around. Did you ring my bell? Oh, Mr. Steele? Yes? I'm Detective Constable Devery, Mr. Steele. Uh, could we talk for a few minutes? Yes. Well? It's about Don Starling. Oh, yes. I've read in the papers. He's going to swing now, isn't he? Uh, he is. He won't be saying thank you, my lord, this time. Huh? Oh, yes, love. Look, we're in the middle of supper. Do you mind talking in the kitchen? Have a seat. Oh, thank you. This is Silver, my granddaughter. Oh, good evening. You like something to eat? I'm sure Silver could lay something on. Ah, uh, no, thank you. Uh, I'd like to, but I've got some more calls to make. Don't start in court yet. Not yet. Yeah, he should be. I don't like him being loose. He's a dangerous man. I thought you police were reckoned to be very clever. We'll get him. Every policeman in England is looking out for him. Oh, thank you. One, please. Is Inspector Martin worried about Starling? Martin can handle him. Can he handle a bullet in the back? Uh, look, sir, what I have to talk to you about is... Uh, well, I think it might be better if we went in the other room. I won't keep you a moment. No need to worry about Silver. She's deaf and dumb. Deaf and dumb? Since birth, she can't even lip read unless you're facing her. I'm sorry. Well, you shouldn't be. She isn't. She's a bloody saint happier than any of us. Oh, yes, thank you. It's... What about starting? Well, Martha thinks he might try and contact you here. Here? <laughs> He's got more sense. I'm sure I don't have to tell you about accessories after the fact. Listen. Five years ago, Don Starling came here as nice as pie. Said he wanted a sideboard. Well, he looked around my furniture. I even showed him my antiques upstairs. Then he said he'd think about it. That night he came and broke in. The cops nabbed him right here in this building. And then you warned me about being an accessory. Well, I assure you, it's only routine, Mr. Steele. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, I must go. OK. Hello? What? This is Furniture Steel speaking. Who's that? You may remember me. This is Don Starling. You got me into a lot of trouble five years ago. I got you into nothing. You made your own trouble. I've got you in my book anyway. But I'm giving you a chance to put yourself right. I'm all right as I am. To hell with you. Well, thanks for the tea. Yeah. You're welcome. I'll see myself down. No bother. And it uh, was only a routine warning. Good night, Silver. Good night. Good night. Now listen to me, Furnisher. Don't you ever hang up on me again. Do you hear? Answer me! I am answering you, Starling, so listen carefully. There's a young man just gone down the stairs. He's a detective. If you don't ring off this minute to help me, I'll call him back. I don't think you will, because I haven't finished yet. The fact that I could have you bashed up probably doesn't bother you. But what about that shapely kid of yours? Something not so nice could happen to her. And she wouldn't be able to scream. You twisted murdering. Better do what I want, Furniture. It's only a small thing. I want a place for tonight. Now listen here, Don't start it. Anyone around here will tell you I'm a man of my word. I've got a gun and I'm not too old to use it. So you keep away from here. And another thing, I'm staying right close to Silver till you're caught and that won't be long. 
Yes, I'm setting you. If you or any of your pals come anywhere near my grandchild, I God, I'll shoot you. So you won't frighten, old man. I like your guts. Since you're a man of your word, I'll make a bargain with you. You forget this call, I'll leave you and your kid alone. A deal? It's a deal. I'll keep my word, and the gun will be handy in case you don't keep yours. I, I know, lass. I talk too much. Lacey Arms, good evening. Who's that? I'm sorry to trouble you on Saturday night. I wonder if I might speak with one of your barmaids, Mrs. Lusk. Yes, it is rather important. This is Mr. Lusk, her ex-husband, on urgent family business. Oh, all right, I'll get her. Phone, Lucky, and make it quick. For me? Who is it? You really want what you say in front of the customers? So who am I ashamed of? You? It's your ex-husband. What? That article? I haven't heard from him in three years. Says it's urgent business. Oh, you know what that means. He's hard up. Don't go away, handsome. You know what? If you played your cards... I don't play cards, Doug. I don't even toss coins. In fact, I'm a bit of a square. <laughs> Hello, Chris. Mention no names, honey. This is Don, your dream man. What? What do you want to do? What do you want? You must be mad calling me here. You let me worry about that. I want a place for tonight, Lucky. Leave the back door open. Now listen to me. I need help. And old friends who won't help will get carved. I mean carved, Lucky. You know? Why sort me out? I can't help you. I can't. Because... Because I'm being watched. Yes, I'm the house. There's one here now. Oh, you lying bitch. Well, it better be. And you'd better forget this if you still want that swan-like neck. Just keep away from me, that's all I ask. I'm not your woman and I never was. Two pints of bitter, Lucky? Right. Two pints of bitter, Doug. Bad news? Ex-husbands are always bad news. Two pints of bitter. Ever meet the lazy blighter? Her ex? No. Always drunk at gambling. She never knew where to find him. Oh, that's the trouble with gamblers. You think you know where they are, and then suddenly they switch. I hear you found the Buick. Any fingerprints? Yeah, some of the best specimens we've ever had. So long as they don't match any of these ten. No, oh, they're too well kept, Doug. Give me another drink. Can't we have any time tomorrow? Now he's getting greedy. Well, Monday. Chloe will call him. She's got to go now. <laughs> no, 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 I've just fixed them. Hello, Chloe. Tom. Very touching little scene out there. What are you doing here? I came to see you, of course. We're old friends, don't you remember? No, no Don, you can't stay here. The police are after you. They haven't caught me yet, have they? Oh, Gus will come home. Gus is dining at the Midland. I checked. No, no, really, Don, you can't stay here. It's not fair. Do you want money? No, I haven't got very much, but I... Money, Chloe? The moment I want you, oh, no. I've been in a monastery for five no, years. No, Don, for know. God's sake. All right, then. Afterwards, afterwards, will you go? What is this? Am I a leper or something? Everywhere I go, people want me to keep going. Yes. Don't open that. Don't open that. Upstairs.
it's not a police car. It looks like I botched one of your dates, my love. Tom, it is not one of my dates. Who is it? What you doing? Is this guy just till work? No, please, no, please. You can't stay. Can't sleep somewhere tonight. I'll be as quiet as a mouse, and you know I don't snore. Don please. You remember the time Gus came home too soon? I stuck a 12 hours up there for your sweet sake. Please, you said you'd go So I will in the morning, as soon as Gus has gone out. Relax, Chloe, relax. I bet you're not as tensed up with your other boyfriends. What's all this on your hands? I don't know, paint or something, who cares? I can't all over my sheets. Well, who's gonna touch the sheets? They must have gone on to a club or something. What do we do, wait? Well, we've covered all the others. Hello, what are you doing here? I'm uh, sorry to bother you at this hour. Wait. Wait, keep that keep mouth button up, because if I'm caught here, baby, I've got a lot to sing about, haven't I? Do it up. Oh, please, I'm gonna do it up. I don't have enough troubles. All this and Starling, too. Apart from a few bets, I hardly knew the man. Why should he show up here? Oh, well, the man's desperate, sir. If he thought you kept money here, well, well, Mr. Martineau thought he might try and break in when your wife was here and... Oh, good evening, Mrs. Hawkins. Good evening. Well, the devil's the matter with you? Oh, nothing. I must have fallen asleep on the bed. We woke you. I do apologize. Well, we won't keep you good people up any longer. Many thanks, Mr. Hawkins. You're welcome. Tell Martin Earl he's off his rocker. Well, where the hell have you been? Been? Yeah, where did you go after we dropped you here this morning? Oh, nowhere. I've been trying to get you, there was no reply. Who oh, was that you? Who the hell do you think it was? I, uh, I was having a bath. We're having a bath this afternoon and this evening too. No, um, no, I went to the pictures as a matter of fact, I went to the Roxy. Said you went there the other day. I'd only seen half the other picture, so I went again. You're always out when I want you. What's this, a dinner party? No, I, I wasn't very hungry. I just had a snack. I thought coffee kept you awake. Did she stay out late and make the big boss man jealous, hmm? I'm sorry. I've had a terrible day. Yes, I know. Poor Cecily. Her parents are in a bad state. Yes, of course. He's a tired darling. He called Chloe and she wasn't in. She's a bad girl. Oh, is that mad I went out to supper? <laughs> Yes, well, nobody blames him for staying out after a day like this. Now, now you must go and sit down, and, and Chloe will bring him a nice cup of coffee. Hmm? That's what he wants, isn't it? The boy's got bad concussion. The doctor says he'll be all right, I hope so. Never can tell with a crack on the head. No. Who is the man, Gus? He's one of Martino's boys. Oh, what, uh, oh. what did he want? He's got some mad idea that Don Starling might show up here. Here? Well, why should he come here? That's what I said. You know what they're like when somebody kills a policeman, they turn the whole town upside down. Hey, have you seen this picture of me in the paper? Oh. Killed a policeman? Well, a warder, it's the same thing. It's obvious you haven't read the papers. Gus Hawkins robbed of 4,000 pounds. That's not a bad picture, that. It was took at Epsom last year, do you remember? This is terrible, Gus. Oh, I don't want to upset yourself. Yeah. I admit 4,000 is quite a smack, but still I can afford it. No, it's uh, Cecily and... Uh, and the boy I'm worried about. Hey. Hey, have you been putting one of your sleeping pills in my coffee? No. You have? I can taste it. I'm not that worried about Cecily. I have to be put to sleep. Oh. 
I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> I know he did it for my sake. Come on, it's time you went to bed. I'm oh, sorry. Now oh, stop crying. Oh, it'll be all right in the morning. <laughs> Gus? Gus! I'm here, I'm here. What are you doing? Look, there's a panic here. There's something in the attic. In the attic? Most likely a bird. I told you not to leave the window open. They always fly. No, Gus. I'd better let the poor little thing out. The last one was dead when we got him. You remember? Don't have to bother about it. Out, sir. Out? About an hour ago. Nothing new coming? There's been a report from County about the Wainwright job. They found a shepherd who saw a black car driving over some rough ground onto the main road near Moortop. About 11 a.m. Saturday morning. Well, the town's right, if you're sure of it. Did you get a number? No, sir, but he thinks it was a taxi. He thinks that's a great help. County thinks it might have been the switch car. Oh, it's brilliant of them. Where did he go to? Onto the main Doncaster Road and joined the race traffic. Along with 500 other black taxis. All we've got to do is to find the one with broken springs. Morning, sir. Where have you been? Over at Gus Hawkins' house. They've uh, just taken him to hospital. Hawkins, what happened? Hmm, seems he fell down the attic steps. The doctor reported to us. Why us? Well, apparently he lives opposite them. Mrs. Hawkins phoned him, and while he was actually taking the call, he saw a man leaving the house. Anything stolen? Not that we know of. Somebody been in the attic, or has been there lately. What did Chloe Hawkins have to say? She blew her top when we arrived. She said it was ridiculous there hadn't been a man in the house. Her husband had got up to let a bird out of the attic and slipped. He was in quite a state. Did she actually see him fall? Uh, she seemed pretty confused about the whole thing. Before that, she told the doctor she was asleep and the fall woke her up. You got anything else? Nothing but a lot of prints. Who's over there now? Harmon and Cassidy. Is Gus seriously hurt? Well, I don't know. I'm still unconscious when they took him away. You know? I think I'd like to be there when he wakes up. Come on. You can come with me. Take him to Martino to see Gus Hawkins. Oh, oh yes, sir. Drive it all to be on the second floor. Oh, sister, Mr. Martin over Mr. Hawkins. Is he stable? Well, just five minutes, but don't get him worried or excited. It's just a social visit. Hello, Gus. What the hell do you want? Well, we heard you had a sore head. We thought we'd come and see you. Well, I noticed you haven't brought me no grapes. I've never known a copper part with anything yet. He's peevish. He must Game be getting better. Over. You can't kid me. What do you want? Gus, did you see what hit you? No, I never saw a thing. It felt like the whole house was coming in. Well, why were you going to the attic? I thought maybe we had another starling trapped up there. A what? A bird. We had a bird fly in. It couldn't find its own way out and it died. No, you tell me what hit me. The missus tells me that the police haven't said anything to her. Well, it was some sort of an accident. What was it, a beam or something? A... Well, I'm not really on the case. I'll send the officer concerned to see you. You'll do that. Hey, you're not holding anything back, are you? Now, Gus, would I be asking you what hit you if I knew? You really must go now, sir. Yeah, all right. I'll well, get better soon, Gus. You send that man along. Yes. 
It was quite a moment, wasn't it? Starling in the attic. Look, I know this is not my case, but I've got to see Chloe Hawkins. I'll get back in all the office. I'm out somewhere. You don't know where. Give me an hour. All right. Who's there now? Only Mrs. Hawkins, sir. I'm Detective Inspector Martineau. May I come in? Well, I was just about... I'd like to ask you a few questions about your husband's accident. Yes, yes, of course. The, um, the police have been once, actually. Um, I've told them everything I know. Yes. Now tell me. Who was the man in the attic? Man? In the attic? We think we know. But we'd like you to tell us. I didn't see any man. Now, here's your telephone. Oh, yes, yes, of course. It's, it's um, down here on the table. Martin, give me the CID. Uh, I want to talk to Cassidy, if he's in. Hello, Cassidy Martin. Those fingerprints you found in Gus Hawkins' attic. Now get out Don Starling's pins and compare them. Yes, Starling's. Yeah, and call me back here. Uh, rush room 6203. Right. Harboring an escaped murder is a very serious offence, Mrs. Hawkins. I should sit down. Of course, if you were intimidated or blackmailed and you told us the whole story, well, that would put a different complexion on the matter. You know, without your help, we're going to have to make persistent inquiries. It's often very embarrassing for the people concerned. And we get to know all sorts of things. I didn't harbour him. He was here when I came back. I didn't harbour him. You are referring to Don Starling, of course. Yes. Look, he said if, if I didn't hide him, he'd tell Gus all sorts of lies about me, you see. I, well, I was alone. I was afraid of him. So you, you hid him in the not... attic? Even this morning, Gus found him. Did you see him hit Gus? No. What was he wearing? Um, he was wearing... Um, a dark shirt and a light tie, and he had a check coat on. Was he very hungry? No, no, he had some bread and cheese. Did he ask you for money? No, I thought he'd come for some money, but he said he didn't want any. Oh, well, a man on the run, and he doesn't need money. Hello, Martino. Get me Devery as soon as you can, will you? Now, did you notice anything unusual about his appearance? No, no, I don't think so. Was he unshaven? Well, no, he, 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 he needed a shave, but it wasn't a Yes, Devery, yes, it was Starling. Now, get out of circle at all crime areas. Yes, get him moving at once. Now, tell me about his hands. His hands? Yeah, were they uh, dirty? Were the nails broken? I didn't notice his hands. So they look clean and well cared for, as clean as mine, for instance. Well, no, they weren't as clean as yours. They had, um, they had paint on them or something. What colour paint? Green. You're sure about the colour? Yes, I'm quite sure. Green? Like the green on your husband's hands? Yes, that's right. Oh, not anymore. All right, thank you, Mrs. Hawkins. Well, Gus, I have to know about this. Well, that depends on you, doesn't it? I mean, if you told us everything, we needn't ask Gus, need we? Oh, uh, if Ed called us ring back, tell him I've gone, would you? You married, man? Yes, sir. Oh, watch her, she's a man eater. Right, over there. Yeah. One, two, all right, three to go. 
Three to go. Oh, she's done it twice. Right. Yeah. Right, three to go. They all have one. Three to go. Over it. You want one? All right, Bragg. One for Bragg. Two more to go. I'll have two. two. Well, wait a minute. Whose money am I going to take? Mine. I was first. You damn well weren't. I was first. Oh, been a kind for No, it. you'll put a buck on it. Well, look, do something, you bitch in my luck. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I'll split it. Well, if you're so keen, you'll let take the loss and we'll see what happens, eh? All right, all right, the book's closed, the book's closed. Right, tell him for eight. Come on, George. Oh, 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 oh. Two tails! Oh. I'll head him for ten. Give us your money. I'll take ten. Oh, right, right, get him up. I get a good one. He's out of them. He's out of them. Yeah. Right, twenty you win. Leave it in the ring. All right, twenty to cover. <laughs> and he's covered. Have the money and get him up again. That's it. Good spin. Beautiful. He's done it again. Yeah. Oh, 40 for you, boy. No, let it ride. And a bet's 40. How about it, Tony? If Tony had 40, he'd be tired. He's won the pool. His grandmother left him a fortune. Let's get him up. Bloody fool, he's going to shop us. That's six. Seven, eight, eight, five, is it 40? Your bet's covered, Doug. Yes! Put it away, you fool. I'm not letting that swaggering blighter get away with my dog. Listen, you can't afford it. Who can't afford it? Who can't afford to flash all that money? Somebody's going to ask. I hated it! I hated it! 160 pounds, it's all yours! Come okay. on, I'll skin the lot of you! <laughs> Well, I've seen them headed eight and nine in a row. I've got to bet. I'm going to stop you for half the night. You saw help me. No, 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 no. Give him room. All right. Savage. Doug Savage? He's got the greenest fingers you ever saw. Boy, I'm glad you're back. What's this about Doug Savage with stained hands? Oh, that's right. County raided a tossing school this morning. They nabbed Savage, green fingers and all. Since then, they've practically taken the lacy arms to pieces. Has anyone questioned him? Well, County had to go. So did the super. Got precisely nowhere. Well, what does Savage have to say about his stained fingers? Well, he hasn't been asked, and I don't think he's even noticed. All right, any call time with the super. He's out. He had to go over to the chief. Your starling call started a minor riot here. Where's Doug Savage now? He's still down in the interview room. Super said to hold him there for you to have a go. Well, did he now? Well, the great man himself. How much longer am I going to be kept down here? That's up to you, Doug. 
so I'm booked for gambling. Give me a summons and I'll I'm not go. interested in your gambling or your illegal bookmaking. What's this Gestapo stuff, then? I'm interested in the brutal murder of a young girl who never did a bit of harm to anybody. So what's that got to do with me? It's got this to do with you. We now have evidence that involves you in the murder. I should say so. Come off it. What kind of a story is this? It's a true one, Doug. For your own good, you better believe it. When the hell did a copper worry about what was good for anyone but himself? Not often. I'm not worried now. It's you who needs to worry. An innocent man doesn't have to worry. Not if you're prepared to maintain his innocence and give a full account of his actions. You've got an account. I was at Doncaster. You've already checked yes, it. Yes, we've checked it. He left tickets passage in a silver line taxi at 9.30 a.m. Your bloodhounds have also interviewed the driver. You always have a silver line to go to the races? No, we usually have lorry lovers, but he let us down. I've been over all this. Good. Now let's go over your last 12 hours. What the hell for? Because within the last 12 hours, you have met and spoken with at least one of the murderers of Cicely Wainwright. Yeah, me sugar. Within the last 12 hours, someone has deliberately involved you in the murder. So show me the evidence. Not yet. First, you'll answer some questions. If there is any evidence, you've planted it. Where did you go when you closed up last night? To bed. Before you went to bed, who did you meet? What is this, a vice check? I'm trying to help you, you idiot. Oh, yes, you're trying to help me. Now, look, Doc. How long have you known me? Too long. Have I ever tried to fix you with something you didn't do? You've certainly walloped me a time or two. I've walloped you when you've been a rough boy. I've never laid a hand on you to make you admit anything. No. Have I at any time ever exaggerated the evidence against you? No. Well, I'm not exaggerating now. When I talked to you in the bar last night, the evidence that involves you wasn't there. Now, get that clear, Doug. It was between last night and this morning that you were drawn into this case. Now, if you're innocent, you can get yourself out. Do you mean there's something at my pub? Before you went to bed last night, who did you meet? Nobody. What the hell is this evidence? You'll know when I get my men. You'll also know who shopped you if you were shopped. Well, let's move on to this morning. You know damned well where I was this morning. You handled a lot here. of money, didn't you? How the devil do you know that? Just a guess. Now, who are you tossing with? I wouldn't know. Did you notice anybody abnormally flush with money? I didn't notice anything. Good God, man, it was actor tossing you that someone involved you in this murder. Now, do you owe that person protection? Who says I'm involved? You do. You talk a lot of guff about evidence and things, and what do you show to back it up? Not one bloody thing. All right, Doug, you can go. I'll get this another way. Yes, persecute some other poor bastard. Yeah, we'll see you in the pub tonight. You can help us question some of the customers. Oh, now, wait a minute. You're not coming officially. I've got no alternative, have I? You're scared off my trade. The hell with your trade. This is a murder hunt. If I give you the tossing school, will you let my pub alone? I won't come near the place. But when you interview... Not me... in your pub, and they won't know who gave the names. Swear? You got my word, Doug. Uh, Tony Jakes, Clogger Roach, Laurie Lovett. Laurie Lovett. What's up now? Oh, one or two things. I'm looking for Don Starling. I'm also looking for his mates in yesterday morning's little job. Why come to me? Uh, you're a taxi man. You get around. Plenty of other taxi drivers. They get around too. Yeah, that's so. But your name gets mentioned. Who's why? By your friends. One in particular. You usually do business with him. You should know who I mean. How the hell do I know? Hey, you got a warrant to search this place? Not yet. Then get out. This is private property. Come in. No, get off back to the ring. Yeah, right. Just a minute. I want a word with you. Who are you? You know how I am. Come here. What's your name? Roach. Clogger Roach, eh? You work here? Yes, he works here. You ought to be down to the rank. I'm afraid the rank will have to wait. I want you both to come to headquarters with me. About what? About what you were doing yesterday for a start. I went to the races. Together? No. Well, who did you take? My kid brother. I see. You can't arrest me. I've done nothing. You can't arrest me when I've done nothing. You're not being arrested. You're being asked to come to the station. You can wash your hands first. How did you make out of the tossing school? What tossing school? Coppers don't seem to realize the man has his living to make. Who's going to repay all this business we drop? I'll write to a member of parliament about it. I've changed my mind. I'm not coming with you. I'm too busy. I'll have to take on those coppers' jobs. I've changed my mind. Sending you in first. Go on, put him in the car. You mean you're not taking him? I'm spitting you up. Besides, he hasn't washed his hands yet. Tell the driver to come back as soon as he's taken him. 
Come on, you two. Freshen up the tea. You've no right snooping around here without a warrant. Why did everything was right, I'd arrest you here on the spot. For what? Committing a felony. What felony, for instance? Murder, for instance. Take him outside. Take your hands off me. I've read about you coppers. Only read about us, clogger. taking you into custody, this Roach. my garage. I only work here. There was you, Don Starling, and Lori Lovett. Now, who's the fourth? I don't know what you're talking about. All right, you'll have plenty of time to think it over. Use the telephone. Get them to send some men over here and take this place apart. All right, come on. All right, show him in. Lovett. Where's Clogger Roach? Don't worry about Clogger Roach. He's sitting down thinking what he ought to say next. Sit down. Cigarette. So I'm going to get the soft treatment. To begin with, yes. You know, statements by accused persons are often a nuisance at a trial. I don't think I need yours. I think I got you right without any words from you. You were the driver of that Derek, the murder car. You know, you all made a good job of wiping that Derek, but you forgot one thing. You forgot the driving mirror. Now, when you stole that car, you adjusted that mirror to your own height. You left a lovely thumbprint, Laurie. At least I'm betting it was yours. Yours or your kid brother's. What's my kid brother going to do with this? Well, I don't know yet. We only just brought him in. You've got nothing against that kid, You nothing. see how all nicely it fits? We've got four men. Starling, Clogger Roach, you, and your kid brother. I'm admitting nothing, but I tell you this. That kid's innocent, absolutely innocent. Then who was the fourth man, Laurie? How do I know? You mean you can't tell me without admitting you were there? We know you were there, man. You'll get nothing out of me. Now, look, Lovett, there were four men on this job, and I want four men. If I don't get the fourth man, I'll get your kid brother. I don't think I can't get him. Now, offering no inducements. But your kid might not even have to go through the grilling we got waiting for him, if I got the fourth man. You bastard cop. Who's the fourth man, Larry? Tony Jakes. Is that the lot? Yeah. Right. You better go and sit down quietly and think up the name of a good lawyer. You're certainly going to need one. What's this for? You can't take me without telling me what for. Now shut up, Tony. You're embarrassing us. Number three, sir. You've no right to keep someone waiting around like this without a charge. What's the charge, if there is a charge? Well, the charge could be murder. And you've been kept waiting because we've been busy with your friends. What friends? I've got no friends. You could be right. Now, listen, Jakes. I've got two statements already, so you watch your step. I'll watch, Miss... Oh, yes. I've been shot, haven't I? Who was it? I'll give you a guess. Laurie Lovett. I could have got away and he shot me. What did he say about me? I can't me? tell you what anybody said. If he said I did it, he's a liar. I never laid a finger on that girl. I never touched her. Starling had her in the back. He was the one who croaked her. And you were in the front seat with Laurie Lovett? Yes. 
I never said I was there, did I? You were there, all right. We've got the lot of you now. Except Don Starling. Now, where is he? I don't know. None of us He must knows. have told you something. I'm telling you, I don't know where he is. He faded, and I wish I'd done the same. Well, he can't stay in England. Did he talk of going abroad? Not a word. For God's sake, Inspector, give me a cigarette. Where's he been hiding since his escape? I don't know. He only said one thing, keep moving. That was his motto, keep moving. Give me a light, Inspector. All right, take him downstairs. I'll see him again later. If I said I did it, I, he's a blind! I swear to you, I never touched her. Three musketeers. Yeah. So where's the fourth? Well, he can't hide forever, sir. No, he's staying around to pick up that loot, I know it. It's somewhere in this city. If he can get it, it'll clear off. The trouble is, he might have got it and cleared already. Reports have been keep pouring in. Seen today's instalment? No. Oh. Take your pick. It's been seen all over Manchester, sometimes in two places at once. Furniture steals. Oh, yes. A girl reported seeing someone like Starling on the fire escape next door. Nothing to it, though. Oh, do you know there's nothing to it? Well, I went round to Steele's and checked. Well, did you check any of the others? No, sir. Just furnished the steel. Did I do wrong? You told me. She's a very pretty kid. You don't think I went round there. My duty to warn you that anything you say... All right, I'll confess. And furthermore, I'd like to add, I've been invited round for breakfast. And so have you. Hey. Old man Steele wants to talk to you. Yes? Another Starling report in from D Division, sir. All right, let's have it. A postman who knows Starling alleges he saw him in Manfield Road two o'clock this afternoon. All right, go on. He tried the door of the house and then hurried away. He didn't knock, he just tried the door. What number? Number 230. The house belongs to a Mrs. Lucretia Lusk. You want a confirmation slip? No, I've got it. Two o'clock, she'd have been at the Lacey Arms. Yeah, and right now she's at home. Wait a minute, I'll come down. You come too late. Ten minutes sooner and you'd have caught me in the bath. Oh, what a thrill. Come in. Oh, you're making me sorry I am late. No, I don't believe it. You are human. I want to ask you some questions, Lucky. Oh. Well, I came in a police car, you know. We can't use those for private amusement. Why not? That makes it official. You come sneaking around here with your hat over your eyes, the neighbors are going to know you're up to no good. You're over. If I made a passage, you'd be frightened to death. Frightened, see. Yes, well, um, business before pleasure. All right, let's get the business over quick. Well, you can sit down, can't you? That's not against the law. Lucky. How well did you know Don Starling? Don Starling? Well, what about him? Well, you used to know him quite well, didn't you? Oh, yes, but that was years ago long before I met my ex. When I found out what he was really like, I dropped him like a hot cinder. Have you seen him? Within the last couple of days? Starling? Well, what could he want to see me for? Money? Oh, I should think so. He'd never come to me for money. Or anything else. Well, he could come to you for shelter. I hadn't set eyes on him. Why? Well, he's been seen hanging around here. He tried your door. Tried my door? When? When was that? Early this afternoon. Oh, my God. I... Now, don't worry. It's only a report. It might not even be true. He might be here. He could be listening to us. He could have come in when I was upstairs. I feel safe while you're here. Don't go. Has Please Starling been threatening go. you? Please don't go until you he makes sure he's not here. Tell me about Starling. I dare. He has been he threatening he you. He me up if I talked. Oh, you don't know what it's like not to have a man of your own to protect you against people like Don Starling. Now, look, don't worry. He won't get near you. I'll see to that. You have to pretend to be hard and tough just to keep your end up. Such a softy. I'll put a couple of men outside if you make you feel any better. Oh, why do you have to be married? Yeah. Well, I am married, Lucky. And both of us better remember that. Nobody knows what's going on and what isn't. I wish life was that easy, Lucky. Well, why can't it be? You've got no children. All's fair when a man has no children. 
Well, there's no future, have you I'll said? take a chance. The other woman's chance. I'll be back here by 11. You know, I can't make times lucky. God knows where I'll be at 11. It might be 3 in the morning before I'm away. But you could have a key. I've never given any man a key. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll phone you here if I can make it then. No, don't do that. Phone me if you can't make it. You're a bad luck, lucky lad. No more work, very bad. At midnight, not in your sweet life. The morning's different as long as you don't wake me up. I'm going to hurt you. Steady, Silver. I'm going to tie you up, that's all.
please. Leaving yourself wide open. What's up? There's somebody shooting upstairs there, sir. Silver. Shoot it from the top. Come on now. Keep back there, please. You're leaving yourself wide open as targets here. Watch out. Watch yourself. Sir. Right, get your men out of this place. Don Starling's up there. Let everyone know he's armed. Right, sir. If we're not careful, a good man might lose his life on this job. Now, come out of it. In the back, it looks bad to me. I'll put it in an ambulance and come back. Stars on the roof. Right. Did you see him? Yes, he was just disappearing up there. The old man took a shot at him with this, but missed by a mile. Did Starling return the fire? No, sir. He raised his pistol and, for some reason, changed his mind and scarpered. Right, he's saving ammunition. That means... He hasn't got a spare clip. Now get informed the superintendent. Tell him what's happened. Tell him it's my urgent request that all the men surrounding this block be issued with firearms now. Yes, sir. Alex, I'm with you. No. Get across the road. Get on the highest roof. You can look down and tell me what's happening. Go on, move!
Harry, you haven't taken your pills. No, I need a drink, Julia. Oh, but you know what the hospital said. What the hell with the hospital? Oh, are we going to have another day like yesterday? I'm on edge, Julia. Can't you see I'm on edge? But this isn't the first time you've sent a man to the gallows. You detested Starling. He, he deserved to hang. No, none of us are perfect. Where are you going? Oh, I've gone out of headquarters. But you don't start till tomorrow. I'd like to take a look at my new office. You just can't wait to get out of this house. Oh, for God's sake, Julia! Try and understand. I'm sorry, Harry. I'll try. Will you phone me if you're coming home for lunch? Hero, didn't you know? Yes, I read. I thought perhaps you were mad at me. Now, why should I be mad at you? Oh, I don't know, because of what I said about... about us. Well, we both should have known better. You're a great girl, Lucky Lusk. You'll make some man a great wife. But it'd have to be someone who liked kids. You want kids, Lucky? Sure I do. Oh, they'd fight and holler and scream and probably drive me up the wall. But I'd love them. By the right man. Oh, Harry, I... You'll miss your bus. I think I already have. You know where I am. If there's ever anything I can do... There's one thing you can do, Lucky. Call one of them Harry. Want to finish the evening in style? Sorry, dear, you've got the wrong customer. Don't worry, love. I won't bankrupt you. On your way. And think yourself lucky it isn't tomorrow. Come again? Now, I'm giving you advice. Beat it. Well, there's no need to be... <gasps> You're mad enough. Hello, sir. Hello, Devery. Anything wrong? No, just the social disadvantage of being a prominent policeman. I'm glad to see you about again, sir. So am I. How's Silver? Oh, fine. They say she'll be sitting up before the end of the month. I didn't come and see you in hospital because, well, well I look like lick spittling for a PC to visit the chief inspector. I understand. Can we give you a lift? No, I'm just walking. It's my last day of liberty, you know. Bloody shame a man like that is so alone. Alone? He's married, isn't he? You don't have to be on your own to be alone, Cover. M2CK calling K51. Are you receiving? Can we go again? Over. Thank you. 